Hello. Welcome to Words That Power Murder Hour. My name is Shelly. And this video, first off, we're going to talk about some makeup that I'm stuck on, like glue. Um, and I have been for a while now, but it's just that good. Um, so this is the Sweet Talk ColourPop palette. Um, and let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different colors on my eyelids. I'm not even joking. I was like full on playing with the makeup today because it was, it was just a day and I, and I needed to, so I did. Um, yes, I love this color palette or eyeshadow palette here's the so this one this one right here when I got it it was kind of weird in the pan so I just kind of squished it back into place that I think that was just in shipping um, but um, yeah I, I love this palette I love everything about it. Um, it is one of the easiest palettes I've ever had to work with. Um, I got it on Ulta with a gift card for, from Christmas. Um, and I also have some of, hold on, let me open this real quick. I have some of this ah, on my eyelids. Um, and this is a, um, ColourPop Jelly Much Shadow Seguro. I hope I'm saying that right, but I absolutely adore this. And this is another thing that I got on Ulta. I think it was like five, six dollars. Little bit goes a long way. Like unbeknownst to me if you put enough of this on it will show up on camera <laughs> I, I just lightly dipped my finger in there right and put some on and then but I mean wow so I have laundry to do because I'm behind on everything I'm actually waiting for the sun to go down a little bit because I will blind everybody in my neighborhood with all this up but it's so pretty and it looks so good in natural light like these cameras do not do justice to what I did on my eyelids at all um, and it's nice to have fun doing makeup again and my eyes will not water uh, my eyes are not irritated I actually have makeup underneath my eyes but I I normally cannot put eyeshadow under my eyes like that, so I'm having to get used to it. <laughs> so you can't really see it on the camera because I was like, oh, I don't want to do too much just in case my eyes start watering. But th there's been none of that. There's just I'm I'm surprised and I'm stunned um, and happy. But we will put a, links in the descriptions. Um, for those I'm so thrilled with this just so thrilled and I still like the garden variety palette as well but I just keep going back to this one palette so um, so yeah if you have uh, sensitive skin what have you like your kind of sensitive skin may be different from mine I'm just saying though that this might be a possible possible thing you can you can try maybe hopefully and they're not expensive so you know that's part of the reason that I typically don't want to spend very much money on makeup because I'm like well if it's just gonna hurt me anyway why bother you know if I'm rarely gonna wear it because I don't feel like being in pain I'm just saying 
so yeah um okay so in this video we're going to be talking uh, that was the makeup section remember that if you need it shout out to bailey syrian for uh inspiring me to do that little chunk the makeup portion um okay so in this video i'm going to be talking about consent and this is something that anyone who knows me for for very long knows that I will have a conversation about consent at the drop of a hat because it is so important um, and this should be taught in schools not like a once in a while kind of thing every friggin day it should be talked about in schools from the time children are really young right up until they graduate high school and in college it should be talked about all the time <laughs> that is my opinion and my opinion on that will not change all right so from rain.org that's r-a-i-n-n.org they have a uh, definition, explanation, and description of consent. And on that page, I am going to read from that page, actually, what consent looks like. And they, this is a really good page. It, you know, if you're trying to explain consent to a teenager or whatnot, it's a really good page, but I'm gonna focus on certain things. Okay. What is consent? Consent is an agreement between participants to engage in intimate activity. Consent should be clearly and freely communicated. A verbal and affirmative expression of consent can help both you and your partner to understand and respect each other's boundaries. Consent cannot be given by individuals who are underaged, intoxicated, or incapacitated by drugs or alcohol, or asleep or unconscious. If somebody agrees to an activity under pressure of threat or intimidation, that isn't considered consent because it is not freely given. Unequal power dynamics such as engaging in sexual activity with an employee or a student also means that consent cannot be freely given. Yes. Um, okay. When you're engaging in intimate activity, consent is about communication. And it should happen every time for every type of activity. I mean, really, you should have a conversation about the stuff that you're into or not into before anything happens. You know, if you think things are going to go that way, talk about it. It's not hard. It can be a turn on. If it's not, if you, you know, if violating someone just because you feel like it or that turns you on, violating someone turns you on, then you have problems. Um, all right, so consenting to one activity one time does not mean someone gives consent for other activities or for the same activity on other occasions. For example, agreeing to kiss someone doesn't give that person permission to remove your clothes. Yes. No, it does not. <laughs> Having sex with someone in the past doesn't give that person permission to have sex with you again in the future. I mean, that should just go without saying. It's important to discuss boundaries and expectations with your partner prior to engaging with any sexual behavior. Yes. I'm so glad they put that in there. You can change your mind at any time. You can withdraw consent at any point if you feel uncomfortable. Yep. So, I, you know, I've seen people equate this to, you know, you're hungry someone offers to cook you dinner and you eat until you're full 
but they try to force feed you more food. Would you be cool with that? No? Well? But see, I don't really kind of, I don't agree with that because it's not quite the same thing, right? So if you agree to making out, you shouldn't be pressured into going further if you're not comfortable with that or you don't want to or what have you. And in prior videos, we talked about intimidation, etc. Well, I've lost track of how many girlfriends I have who have been intimidated, um, who have been intimidated into having sex because they were afraid that if they didn't, give in to those demands, they would be harmed, uh, seriously harmed. I, it feels like just about, so, I mean, it's just ridiculous how many women I know who have been forced into doing things that they didn't want to do because they were afraid that if they didn't do as was demanded of them, they would be hurt. Just because you intend, like if you intimidate someone into having sex, right? That doesn't mean it was okay. And actually that is right. So just because someone decides to have sex with someone in order not to be hurt does not mean that they gave consent is what I'm saying. Um, and uh, there's going to be another video coming up about more on that. Um, you can withdraw consent at any point if you feel uncomfortable. <clears throat> One way to do this is to clearly communicate to your partner that you are no longer comfortable with this activity and wish to stop. <clears throat> All right. What is enthusiastic consent? Enthusiastic consent is a newer model for understanding consent that focuses on a positive expression of consent. Simply put, enthusiastic consent means looking for a presence of a yes rather than the absence of a no. <coughs> <coughs> enthusiastic consent can be expressed verbally or through nonverbal cues such as a positive body language like smiling, maintaining eye contact, and nodding. These Clues alone, these cues alone do not necessarily re represent consent, but they are additional details that may reflect consent. It is necessary, however, to seek verbal confirmation. The important part of consent, and enthusiastic or otherwise, is checking in with your partner regularly to make sure they are still on the same page. Enthusiastic consent can look like this asking permission before you change the type or degree of activity with phrases like, is this okay? Confirming that there is a reciprocal interest before initiating any physical touch. Letting your partner know that you can stop at any time. And they go further with that. Um, then there are nonverbal responses. Like, this is just a really good page. So if you want to know more about consent, I highly suggest it. Um, and I don't do that lately because I, I went through a lot of different pages, which by the way, uh, man, I just realized I'm gonna have to do another video on something else. Yay. All right, so, and, and there's a thing that I think a lot of the time people don't think about it can be highly arousing right 
to have that communication. You know, if you talk about things a certain way, when you're having certain interactions, um, so it doesn't have to be boring and do you want this? Are you into this? Is this okay? <laughs> Everyone should really go uh, watch interviews of Nina Hartley when she talks about these sorts of things because she's going to be way better at expressing this than I am. Um, and I have to censor things because YouTube is ridiculous with censorship, um, unfortunately. But uh, I actually saw her speak at a college campus one time and it was amazing. Um, so yeah, go look up Nina Hartley. She talks about consent. She talks about all of that. And she's amazing. Um, okay, so why do I talk about consent so much? Because having worked in law enforcement and seen so many victims come through criminal court uh, and seen what they go through and you know, heard so many stories of, I was afraid if I didn't say yes, I wouldn't make it out of the room alive. Or I was afraid he would beat me up. Or, you know, on and on and on. And I am tired. I'm fucking tired of hearing terms like buyer's remorse. I don't ever fucking want to hear that term again. I'm gonna say that again. I don't ever fucking wanna hear the term buyer's remorse again. Because anytime I hear, especially a man say that, in my mind I'm wondering what the fuck have you been up to? Are you incapable of hearing, of sitting the fuck down, shutting the fuck up, and listening to what women are saying? I gotta wonder. Buyer's remorse translates to you might feel like you've been pressuring women into having sex and maybe it's gonna come back and bite you in the ass. I have sat there in the hospital holding women's hands after they were raped. I sat there with women who went to the hospital because they said yes, but only because they were pushed, pressured, intimidated, in fear for their life and their well-being into having sex. Rapists and abusers will use terms like buyer's remorse as a mask. They'll say, oh, I didn't rape her. She just changed her mind the next day. So if you're not a rapist, don't use that term. Take that mask away from them. I'm tired of hearing, oh, she's just, you know, she's angry because he dumped her or just whatever rape apologist bullshit that I hear from these people who have no fucking clue, no idea what they're talking about at all, whatever. They just, nah. I've actually seen someone who would say things like that and then his sister was essayed, she was raped and he fucking changed his tune quick. When he, when it was, when it hit real close to home, then it began to dawn on him. But even then, half the time, people will continue to say these things and words have power.
you know, you'll have a person who knows people who have been raped, sexually assaulted, whatever, um, and still say these things. You might as well just slap those survivors in the face every time you say that. I'm just saying. Um, it is, you may not realize it, but it's a very hurtful, disrespectful thing to say to a survivor. Because I'm a survivor, and I've had friends say things like this to me, and I just look at them and say, really? So you're saying that I'm lying? Are you saying that I'm, I'm making it up? Are you saying, what are you saying about me? think that anyone who, who says things like that really needs to do some self-examination. So, <clears throat> I'm actually going to do more videos on that particular subject because that's the thing that just really gets on my nerves. It gets on my last, last nerve. Um, and I'm almost to the point of saying that people who are incapable of just fucking evaluating themselves when they use language like that, like I may not even want people like that in my life. Because as a survivor, it is hard for me to explain what that does to a survivor. Um, you are in effect telling that survivor that what happened to them was nothing. And also, however they feel about what happened to them doesn't matter. You're invalidating them. And I'm to the point of not giving a shit if a person who would say that to me doesn't give a shit about how that makes me feel, then why should I care how they feel? Does that make sense? I did not consent to having this ridiculous opinion forced on me. Buyer's remorse is bullshit. You may have someone I'm going to make a whole video on that. Consent is extremely important and it can also be extremely hot. It's not hard to do. If you find it hard to do, then you're probably going to end up in prison at some point, hopefully. Um, or worse because more and more women are getting to the point where we're not going to take anyone not listening to us either giving or not giving consent I think it is extremely important that people start talking about consent more openly and just kind of not even debating about it just getting a better understanding of consent and how important it is and how easy it is to live with just the general understanding that you learned in kindergarten. Keep your damn hands to yourself. Unless someone says it's okay. Unless someone says it's okay. Keep your hands to yourself. It's just that easy. <laughs> you know, being respectful of someone else is not hard. I think. Alright, so it's a short-ish video. Um, and I'm going to go 
do another video here in just a second. So, um, right. Remember, you have the right to say no. And if your no is not respected, kick that person out of your life. Nobody has time for that. And, you know, you have the right to say yes, too. All right. Bye. Hello. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, and if you're enjoying my channel, then please like, subscribe, share, follow, ring the bell, and hit all. Um, comment, all of the above. <laughs> it all helps with the algorithm to get the videos up so that people who need them can see them. And that is the whole point of what I'm doing. Um, thank you, and uh, have a good day, night, or whatever. Bye. See you later.